This video is brought to you by Brilliant. For the past two years, Bulgaria has been consumed by political gridlock. Since Boyko Borisov was voted out in April 2021 after a corruption-ridden 12 years as Prime Minister, Bulgaria has suffered through an astonishing five elections, with the latest coming in April of this year. Every time, the vote has been split between Borisov's right-wing coalition and a series of new pro-Western anti-corruption parties. And every time, they've failed to eke out a majority in Bulgaria's 240-seat National Assembly. Finally, after the fifth election, the two blocs have agreed to form a sort of grand coalition, including both Borisov's coalition and the anti-corruption parties founded to oppose him. As you'd expect, the coalition negotiations haven't been easy, and the whole thing was nearly scuppered by a leaked recording of the anti-corruption politicians talking about their plans to strip power away from the president and Bulgaria's security services, who are generally pretty pro-Russian. Nonetheless, they've weathered the storm, and last week, the new government was finally sworn in, promising, amongst other things, to finally start arms shipments to Ukraine. So in this video, we're going to take a look at Bulgaria's new government, why they're great news for Ukraine, and whether they can put an end to Bulgaria's long-running political crisis. Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. So let's start with some context. For the last couple of years or so, Bulgaria has been stuck in a political stalemate, with no party able to form a stable coalition. This is why the country has suffered through five elections in the past two years, and why it's taken them over three months to form the coalition this time. The crisis started after the election in April 2021, when the incumbent right-wing populist GERB party failed to win enough seats to form a stable coalition. GERB had been in power continuously since 2009, and was led by Boyko Borisov, a former mayor of Sofia and personal guard of Todor Zikov, who effectively ruled Bulgaria from 1954 until 1989. Borisov originally came to power on an anti-corruption platform, but once he got into power, he ended up being pretty corrupt himself. Bulgaria is ranked lowest among the 27 EU member states in Transparency International's 2022 Corruption Index, and the Centre for the Study of Democracy, a Sofia think tank, found in a 2019 report that at least 35% of public procurement contracts involved corruption practices. Unsurprisingly, this hasn't helped Bulgaria's economy. It's remained the poorest member of the EU since it joined in 2007, and nearly a quarter of its population live below the national poverty line. Anyway, Borisov faced waves of protests over the years in reaction to various corruption scandals and policy failures, but the lack of viable opposition and a ballooning state allowed him to hang on. However, in April 2021, his GERB-led coalition only won 26% of the popular vote, which gave them just 75 seats in Bulgaria's 240-seat parliament. Other parties refused to form a coalition with Borisov, citing the history of corruption, and after a couple of months of trying and failing to form a government, new elections were called for July the 11th. This time, GERB won even fewer votes, and came second to a new anti-corruption party, led by television host Slavi Trifonov. Trifonov was widely expected to form an anti-Borisov coalition, but the power apparently got to his head. Once he'd won, he declared coalition to be a dirty word, and presented a take-it-or-leave-it proposal that he should lead a minority government. The other anti-Borisov parties told him he could stuff it, and once again, Bulgaria was left without a functioning government, forcing yet another round of elections in November. This was Bulgaria's third election in just over six months, and this one was won by another new anti-corruption party founded by two Harvard grads, sometimes known as simply the Harvards. They formed a four-party coalition which lasted until June, when one of the four parties, the one led by that Trifonov guy we mentioned earlier, withdrew over disagreements on spending and whether Bulgaria should back North Macedonia's European Union accession, paving the way for more elections in October. 
This time, it seems Bulgarians had had enough of this kind of chaos with these new anti-corruption parties, and the largest party was GERB yet again. Unfortunately, as happened in April 2021, the anti-corruption parties refused to form a coalition with Borisov, forcing yet another election in April 2023, Bulgaria's fifth election in two years. GERB did even better this time, with their coalition winning 69 seats, and the anti-corruption parties reluctantly agreed to enter coalition negotiations with him. Borisov's GERB-led coalition and the main anti-corruption coalition, led by one of the Harvards, finally agreed a sort of grand coalition earlier this month, which will have a rotating prime minister and a 132-seat majority in the National Assembly. Negotiations were nearly scuppered in late May, when a private conversation between leaders of the anti-corruption parties was leaked to the media, wherein they discussed taking back control of the security services from President Radev and purging them of Russian influence with any replacements to be, quote, approved by the embassies. For context, while most of Bulgaria's political class are pro-Western, its president, Ruman Radev, has opposed Western efforts to arm Ukraine, which is why Bulgarian arms exports to Ukraine had been organised secretly. Despite the fact that Bulgaria is a member of both the EU and NATO, the Kremlin still has ties to Bulgaria's security services, which persisted after the collapse of the Soviet Union, and the Bulgarian public are also conspicuously pro-Russian. According to the latest Eurobarometer polling, just 47% of Bulgarians are in favour of sanctions on Russia, the lowest figure in the EU. Anyway, this didn't go down well with Radev, other pro-Russian groups, or the security services, and the comment about embassies provoked accusations that the anti-corruption parties were conspiring with foreign governments. They weren't particularly nice about Borisov in the recording either, and for a bit, it looked like coalition negotiations were going to collapse. Nonetheless, having weathered the storm, the coalition has now made it clear that one of their priorities is going to be moving Bulgaria westwards. While they've apparently given up on purging the security services for the time being, they've said that they want to accelerate Bulgaria's adoption of the euro and send arms to Ukraine, despite Radev's protestations. This is pretty brilliant news from Ukraine's point of view, because Bulgaria is one of the largest producers of the Soviet standard weapons and ammunition that Ukraine is most familiar with. Now, this isn't all cut and dry quite yet. While this new government is obviously great news for the West, and conversely bad news for Russia, Bulgaria's politics is more polarised than ever, and there's no guarantee that this grand coalition will be able to hold it together for a full term. Nonetheless, it's still a first step, and hopefully the threat of yet another election and the accompanying political chaos will be enough to keep things ticking over. Now, when making videos like this, we rely on a ton of data analysis to interpret elections, results, and policies of the big parties. That kind of analysis isn't just crucial for our jobs. As our world becomes more driven by AI and data, your job will likely require more analytical skills too. Fortunately, you don't have to be left behind if you jump onto Brilliant. Brilliant is the STEM learning platform which can teach you all the skills you'll need in an increasingly digital workplace, from foundational and advanced maths to AI, data science, neural networks, and more. That means that the progression of tech and AI doesn't need to be intimidating. With easy to understand and interactive programs, you can level up your skills by spending just a few minutes a day on Brilliant. And you'll want to. Their programs have been directly built around the principles of active learning, so they're fun, interactive, and help you learn by doing. Plus, with new courses added all the time, there's no way you're getting left behind. To try everything Brilliant has to offer, free for a full 30 days, click on the link in the description. Plus, the first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. As always, thanks to Brilliant, and thanks for your support.